In the Light Shark, like many other lighting consoles, we use cues to play back sets of information that may be palettes as well as individual parameters for different lights so that with one press, we can play back a full look or parts of a look of lighting with fade times and more. In this video, we're gonna teach you the basics of recording and playing back cues and setting fade times as well. Let's dive in. So as we discussed in the last video, selecting lights and placing them into palettes is always the first step. So I'm gonna go ahead, select intensity, select a position, and for this fixture, I need to select color as well to get them to appear. And then once I've done that, I'm ready to record my first cue. Recording a cue is simple. Just press record, and then press the playback that you want the cue to go on. If there's no cues on the playback, it will be the first cue. But, for example, if I change the color and record another cue, you can tap at the top here of the cue window or pop it up and tap and you'll create that second cue. Now I'll press clear twice or once if you're in the default clear settings. Now I can go ahead and raise the fader and the cue is played back. Now there's a few things we'll notice about it. One is there's a variety of playback options that govern how the playback is played, and you'll find them here under this three dot menu. By default, the trigger settings of bringing the fader up or down to start or stop the cue are on, but you can change those. You can also cause it to start when the console loads, set it to activate when pages change, or lock it to every page. The trigger level sets the percentage of fader level that it needs in order to go or release when started or stopped. In here, there are also more playback options for how the fader controls the lights. However, between cues, you probably also want fade times more often than not you do. By default, as you can see, the fade times are all set to zero. That's okay, we can change them. If we double tap on the header, we're brought to the cue list window and our cue list is selected, but we can also go to cue list manually and select that cue list. It shows us at the bottom what playback the cue list is on. Now notice we have 10 playbacks here at the bottom. These are the default playbacks on an LS1 or LS core console. If we swipe to the left or right, we get up to 30 playbacks wide on each page. You can also access these from the virtual playback page. Playbacks are also in pages and you can change pages using the page up and down button. Now notice by default, when you change pages, any active playback does stay around. It's still referencing the original page that it's on, but it stays on here until you stop the queue. That's where some of the options and playback options can really help if you do a lot of page changing. Here in the queue list window, we can change the timings for the queue. So by default, crossfade, fade in, and fade out are all different numbers, okay? But we're able to set them to the fades that we desire. There are a few ways to do this. One is for any individual time, we can just press and hold and then set a time. And you see it will be set. Perfect. Now let's play it and see what happens. As you can see, the lights fade nicely. Fade in and fade out allow you to override the fade in time and fade out time, which are just symmetrical based on the crossfade time by default. But if you need them to not be the same for both fade in and fade out, you can do that. You can also adjust what cue comes next by the cue number in this window. Last but not least, by selecting the numbers of cues, you can select multiple cues. Then go through the same action of either pressing set on the console and pressing the number or just holding down on the screen. And you're able to change the values for multiple cues at the same time. They can either wait and have a follow time at which they automatically move forward. By default, it's set to zero, which means it stops and waits for the next press of the go button. You may notice when you go and stop a cue, you may want it to fade out. By default, it doesn't. 
That would be the release time, or deactivate as it's called in the light shark. You could set that here in the cue list options, which is different from the playback options. The cue list options has some other helpful options as well, which you can see here. Cue list may also be transformed into chases, which are going to bump through your cues very quickly. They have the ability to crossfade, so they fade nicely. Or not crossfade at all. For example, if we set this to zero, you're able to tap to set a BPM or set a BPM manually here. And then the chase will follow. You can stop the chase and head back into step mode if you want to be in a regular cue list. There also is a go to cue function here for more theatrical type uses that allow you to set a cue to go to next and you can go to it instantly, or set it so that the next time you press the go button, it will fire that cue. That is the basic of recording to the playback and playing them back. We hope you enjoy doing this on your Light Shark. Mm -hmm.